how do you scale your machine learning solution over large amount of data? Have you ever heard about Synapse ML or previously known as Microsoft Machine Learning for Apache Spark? Then let's go. Hello everyone, this is MG and here I am with another video which I'm going to talk about a massively scalable machine learning library that is built on Apache Spark and it's named as Synapse ML which enable you to train production ready machine learning models in a large scale and it is very well integrated with machine learning ecosystem and libraries namely MLflow. Then let's check it out. Before we start make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video thank you all right let's start with what is synapse ml so it used to be named as mml spark which stands for microsoft machine learning for apache spark and now it's called synapse ml so first of all when i say synapse ml this is a library and it doesn't mean that you have to use Azure Synapse service to be able to use Synapse ML. So this is a library, you can use it in Azure Synapse. If you don't use Azure Synapse, that's actually a, not only a data warehousing solution on Azure, but you can have some advanced analytics on the top of your data warehousing solution within Azure ecosystem. So you can check it out, Azure Synapse, that's totally a separate service in Azure. But here we're talking about a library that not only you can use it in Synapse, but also you can use, let's say, in Databricks, any Spark environment that you have. So the question is, why should I use Synapse ML library and, and what it is and what are going to be the benefits? So Synapse ML is a library for machine learning, which is massively scalable. You can have even a cluster that is running on a Spark with hundreds of machines and you can have Synapse ML integrated. So you can have production ready models. And when I say models, I mean even a simple classification regression or any image analysis, a speech to test, translation, anomaly detection, any, any ML challenge that you're facing, you can leverage Synapse ML in a scalable manner with large scale amount of data. So the question is, is it a sort of a new API that I have to learn and I have to understand the analogy of Synapse ML and how to code? Well, the answer is not really because it is deeply and cleanly integrated with currently existing Spark ML APIs. So you know that with the Spark ML, you can have distributed machine learning solution there, right? So Synapse ML can provide some more additional capabilities. We're going to talk about them and it has done some even contributions back to MLflow integration with Spark that you can have and leverage those and we're going to talk about them, what they are specifically with their latest version that they released the time that I'm recording this video, which is version 0.10. So you can use a variety of different languages with it. Let's say Python, Scala, Java, R, and also now even .NET, C Sharp, so on and so forth. And you can check out the list of all supported coding languages in their documentation. And also, this Synapse ML is integrated wide variety, variety of different ML technologies and libraries, let's say like GBM, or if you remember, we talked about ONNX, it is already integrated with it. And also recently, they added more couple of capabilities that are gonna talk about them. First of all, if you know OpenAI, uh, which is also integrated with Azure, you can have variety of powerful, mainly language models, like transformers, GPT models. So these are now integrated with Synapse ML. That means I can leverage these language models coming from OpenAI in a scalable manner with large scale amount of data through Synapse ML. Or if you're using cognitive services, what are cognitive services? There are some Azure based services that you can use some pre trained models as an API to your solution. For example, you have a, a text 
and you want to do some sentiment analysis, you don't need to train a model, just you can have an Azure Cognitive Service, call that API, it will retrieve you back the sentiment analysis results. So there are so many cognitive services for text, images, translation API, all those pre-trained models with cognitive services on Azure are now integrated with Synapse ML. That means you can scale the application of cognitive services or these trained models using Synapse ML on large scale amount of data and have the solution there. There's so many demos and, and example notebooks in the documentation, which I'm gonna add the, sh the, the link of those in the video description, you can check them out. And last but not least, now Synapse ML is integrated with MLflow. So if you use Synapse ML for training a model, that means now you can use MLflow for your Synapse ML models to save them, load them, and even deploy them which is also an integration uh, contribution from Synapse ML team back to MLflow that they can now support Synapse ML models. Um, they have also an environment, they have used a uh, binder as an environment that you can use live demos. What does that mean? Uh, imagine that now you have a GitHub repository that you have lots of codes and instead of just having codes there, within the same your github repository now you can even execute those codes let's say in jupyter notebook and you don't need to be worried about setting up the environment having a server there's a server on backend so you can just launch the code from the github and even execute them which we were gonna do that in one of the notebook examples to check how synapse ml works so before we jump to the code here is the main website synapse ml if you just quickly search it you'll find the link and here are very nice examples of how you can use, as I mentioned, cognitive services. Here, for example, for sentiment analysis, quickly through Synapse ML in a scalable manner over a large scale amount of data on your input data frame with your selected language, so on and so forth. You can leverage deep learning in a scalable manner using Synapse ML. Also, if you have um, Responsible AI challenges, you want to address explainability issue of your trained models and your models using large amount of data, you can use Synapse ML integrated with Responsible AI packages, let's say SHAP here, to explain your model features. This is actually a very cool capability and let me know if you're interested to have a separate video on session to just see how we can have Responsible AI in a large scale through Synapse ML that we can have a separate video for this, which I think is gonna be great. Uh, it is integrated with large GBM and even OpenCV. You can have some image-based transformation using OpenCV, but in a larger scale because you are using it through Synapse ML. This is great. Um, we already talked about some key components and capabilities of Synapse ML, which is already mentioned here, so I'm gonna pass through it. And let's go actually through the uh, binder demo environment and run one of the notebooks there. For doing so, I want to go through this article. I will add this to the video description, uh, which is uh, summarizing some of the great recent capabilities of Synapse ML with the recent release for the time that I'm recording this video. Today is uh, August 21st, 2022. And uh, here is a link. If you all the way scroll down, you can check our binder site to get us started with Synapse ML without worrying about setting up an environment and a Spark environment, installing infrastructure, and even you don't need any Azure account. So I clicked on it. Let's actually do so. And you will see that binder is starting the repository of Microsoft Synapse ML and all those codes in GitHub repository are now an interactive Jupyter notebook for me that I can run them over a server. So you have to wait for a couple of minutes for to give it a time to the server to start running and I already did this so I can quickly go through the codes and you can see now the server is ready. I have the notebooks coming from Synapse ML documentation. There are examples for how to use, let's say, cognitive services with Synapse ML. How to use responsible AI in a scalable manner using Synapse ML. And I think I chose a regression notebook and I ran it just before recording this video. Let me actually bring it. 
there you go so yes I clicked on regression and there was an example of creating a regression model to predict the delay for flights so what I did I just simply ran the code and I can show you quickly the results that I got so first of course I needed to create the spark session through PySpark I'm using Python in the spark API so here's my session written in spark object let me go all the way down and skip the results of code execution and then I needed to import my Synapse ML. There is a way that how we can install Synapse ML in documentation. It's fairly easy, but because I'm using the binding environment, I don't need to install it. It's already there, so I'm calling it. And now here is the place that I'm importing my CSV data. That's my training data set. It's coming from a pocket file and a blob storage. Um, and I do have access. It's public. And then with executing this code, I can see the schema of my data set and just the first 10 rows of this flight delay data in the Pandas data frame. You can see that there are some features that I have, month, day of month, day of week, the carrier time, the name, um, the origin and destination, all the way, the delay that I had, and that's it. So let's see how we can train a model using Synapse ML. So I'm randomly splitting the data to 75 and 25%. You know why we're doing this. Of course, we need training data set and test data set. And then here are the packages needed for training my model. So we, from Synapse ML, I'm importing the train regressor. So I just want to train a simple regression model for predicting the flight delay and some other specific components from PySpark that we're going to talk why we're using them and how. So the first thing that we did here is converting some of the columns, let's say this one, to categorical. So that's why I have the name of the columns that I want to have them in categorical manner. And I rename it my train and test categorical data set because I want to do the same for both training and test data set. I mean converting columns to categorical. So for doing so, I'm adding indexer to the input columns, which are the categorical columns that I have specified here, and we just give it a name. This is temporary, and I want to rename it. So when I have this transformation, I can call it over my training data, drop that column and the temporary column, and just rename it. The same thing for the test data set. So I'm just doing a very simple transformation over the data. And here's the place that I'm defining my regression here with the specific parameters. Of course, that would be different if you have a different algorithm type, but here it is a regression that these are the parameters that I'm specifying. And I'm calling those configurations in this part with using train regressor that is coming from Synapse ML. There you go. And here's the column that I'm going to predict. So that's my label, which is the delay. And I'm fitting this in my training data set. So I ran the code and then here's the place that I can score my test data to see how my model is working. Here are some configurations for the place that I'm storing my model. If it's on Synapse, that's a different path. If I'm using Synapse ML in Databricks, here's the way that I can store over a Databricks file system. But here, I can just store the model in my temporary current working directory, right? And I can then write the model and save the model. Then I can load the model back from the given directory and then do the transformation over the test data, which is actually doing the prediction here. And it is coming from that, I mean, the transform object, which is doing the prediction coming from my model that I loaded. And just showing the first 10 rows, you can see that here's the predicted flight delay. So what we can do, we can, of course, calculate the metrics of the trained model based on the score data set to see how the model is performing with some statistical analysis. So for doing so, I am importing compute model statistics from Synapse ML, which is a scalable that is great. So if I have large data, still I can calculate these metrics. I did so with the score data, which I have it here, and then I convert the result to Pandas to have a nice way to visualize it. And you can see it's regression, so that's why I have R2 score, mean absolute error, so on and so forth. So what you can do also, you can calculate these metrics per instance. 
I mean per each row of predicted value you can calculate for example L1 and L2 loss which is the difference of your predicted value and true value and the also squared metric uh, squared metric of that for doing so you need to import compute per instance in st uh, uh, statistics from synapse ml train and then you call your score data and you say that i want to actually calculate a one l2 score for the just show me the first 10 rows you can see that for each row here that i have i calculated l1 and l2 loss based on predicted value and true value so i'm doing this per instance that again can be scaled because you're using synapse ml and is leveraging also a spark so that was just an example of how you can use it in action and it was just a very simple regression model to make it fairly clear and high level of what is this what is synapse ml how it can be used and what are the benefits and of course based on your own specific machine learning project you can see from documentation what other synapse ml capabilities can be a great fit to your project that we already in high level summarized and talked about it that's it and i hope you enjoyed this video you are not born a winner and you are not born a loser you are born a chooser have fun my friends and we'll see you next week <laughs>